In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Vortex to install a collection. I'm also probably going to explain what a collection actually is. Please note, chapter points are included in the description below this video. If you are looking for a quick installation example, there will be one towards the end of the video. The easiest way to think of a Nexus collection is that it's similar to a recipe. It contains a list of ingredients, in this case mods, and a list of instructions on how you should mix those mods together. None of the mods actually come with the collection. They're not packaged in there as one great big mod pack. It is very simply quite a small, lightweight list of things, list of mods and a list of instructions on how to install them. But what makes this recipe, this collection useful is the fact that the instructions are understandable by your mod manager, in this case, Vortex. It will be able to help you download and install the mods, making the process a lot quicker and a lot simpler. It's probably easier to just show you. So I'm going to install a collection. And the collection that I have chosen for this video is actually one I created with this video in mind and gave the rather boring name, Gophers Stable New Vegas. This is a fairly small and focused collection for the Fallout New Vegas game. Fallout New Vegas is quite an old game. It's still one of my favorites, and it has a very active and talented modern community creating mods for it. But in its vanilla state, the performance is not brilliant, and it has this very odd micro stutter. It's notoriously unstable, and it does have rather a lot of bugs. So this collection just contains the mods I consider essential for stability, performance, and for basic bug fixing. It contains a bunch of mods that are hosted on Nexus, plus one that is actually off-site, and that is the New Vegas script extender. However, that particular mod is installed automatically by Vortex if you allow it. I've made a, another video covering that if you want to check that out. So all of the mods that we're going to be installing via this collection are from Nexus, and it's going to be relatively straightforward. There is one mod that does require a little extra work from you, and that is the FNV 4GB patcher. We'll deal with that when we get there. Let's start with the premium Nexus user experience, because it is a little different to the free user experience. So I'm logged in as a premium user. I'm going to click on the collection, add to Vortex here. And because Vortex is not currently running, it will automatically start and the collection will begin to download. You will get a pop-up telling you that the collection has been added to your collections. However, please note, no mods have been downloaded or installed at this point. It's just the recipe. You now have to decide whether or not you want to install the mods that come with this collection, and if so, to which profile. I'm going to be installing mine on my collection test profile. For many of you, it will just be the default profile, and you click Install Now to start the installation process. It will immediately pop up this installation note that says, the curator of Gopher's Stable New Vegas has provided additional instructions for installing the 4 gigabyte patcher. You can view these instructions now or check them later from the instructions column in the collections view. However, you'll notice in the background, mods are downloading and installing as I speak. I'm going to show these instructions now. There they are. 4 gigabyte patcher. FNV 4 gigabyte patcher will need to be manually run once the collection has been installed. Simply go to the game folder for Fallout New Vegas and run the file named fnvpatch.exe manually. And in the time it's taken me to read that, all of the mods have been installed. As you can see, collection installation complete. I hit done. And now all I need to do 
is follow this simple instruction and I'm pretty much ready to go. So I go along to my Fallout New Vegas installation folder, which for me is on my F drive under Steam, Steam apps, common Fallout New Vegas, and I find the file mentioned, which is fnvpatch.exe, and then I double click. It will open up this window. It will tell me that falloutnv.exe has been patched. Press any key to continue, and that's it. It's actually done. And I can see the performance boost immediately. My frame rate is a lot higher. It's smoother and there is no sign of that awful micro stutter. Okay, so what about the Nexus supporter experience? Well, it's pretty similar. You're still gonna go along to the collection page and click add to Vortex you will still get the same pop-up telling you that the collection's been added to your collections and you will select the profile you wish to install it to and click install now. The difference is for each mod that you're downloading from Nexus, you will get this extra pop-up suggesting that you could either go premium if you wished to uh, enjoy the premium experience or you could just click the download button here. It will open up a browser tab. It will take you to this giant button here that you click, start download, and it will then give you the same set of instructions that it gave the premium user. And each time it downloads a mod from Nexus, you will get the same pop-up. You will click download, you will get a giant start download button, which you click, and so on. It's a few extra clicks. It's a little monotonous, but it's not remotely difficult. It is still far quicker than doing this yourself. Um, it's just a little brainless and repetitive. And I know I'm inviting some jokes about my own videos here. And that's it. It required an extra 20 clicks of the mouse in this case, but it really didn't require any thought on my part. It was pretty easy and it was almost as quick. And of course, in the case of this collection, I still need to run the patcher to finish it off completely. The free user experience is very similar to the Nexus supporter experience. In fact, it's pretty much identical except when it comes to downloading the mods. Once you click the download button from the pop-up and you're taken to the Nexus site, instead of a single button that you press to download the mod immediately, you will get a slow download button that when you press will have a short delay whilst you are fed an advert and it will then start the download. But the process is basically the same. It's just, it's got a five second, five or six second delay in it. So it will take a little bit longer depending upon how many mods you're going to be downloading. So we've seen a collection install mods that were hosted on Nexus. But what about collections that contain mods that are hosted elsewhere? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you now with yet another collection that I created with this video in mind. This is Gopher's Darnified UI collection, and it's a collection of 13 mods that will overhaul the user interface based around the Darnified UI. I love that mod, always been a big fan of it. However, it cannot be found on Nexus, and it's also notoriously a little difficult to install because it does require some any tweaks to get the fonts working. However, with this collection, you don't need to make the any tweaks. The any tweaks are made for you. You will, however, have to acquire some of the mods in a slightly different manner. This collection actually shares two mods with the previous collection I installed, but that is not a problem at all. They will simply be ignored when I add this collection because I already have them. We also have two optional mods, which I will talk about a little later on. Now I will be installing this collection as a premium user, 
but the most important thing here is how it handles off-site mods, and that's identical for premium and free users, so you can follow the process no matter what sort of user you are. Once again, I'm going to hit Add to Vortex. It will add the collection to Vortex, and I will get the little pop-up. I then select the profile I wish to install it to and hit Install Now. I immediately get this pop-up. This is a redirect. It's actually looking for the Darnified UI file, which is currently hosted on the Tale of Two Wastelands forums. So it's giving me a warning. It's telling me it's about to go to an external web page. It's giving me the URL so I can check it. And then if everything's okay, I can hit continue. Notice there's some instructions up here. They are going to remain even once I've hit continue. The browser will then open, and now I'm going to read the instructions. Click the link after it says download the file here, and follow the instructions to download. This window will close as soon as you click a valid download link. So, I'm looking for a link after where it says download the file here. And that is the link right there. This is the main file for the Darnified UI. I'm going to click on this link. It directs me to this page. I'm going to hit download. And Vortex has detected a download has begun, so it moves on. NVSE, right, so we're now installing MCM. This is actually from the Nexus site, but it's detected that I've got the Darnified UI and will make the correct changes required. Another pop-up link telling me that it's redirecting to a website. Again, it's tailored to Wastelands, and it's the optional file for MCM to make the MCM match the heads-up display. So I'm going to click Continue. Click the link after optional file MCM matches HUD, which is there. So I'm going to click this link. It will take me to a download page, and... I think that's the download link. Yes, last Nerd, Norwegian for download. I click there. Once Vortex detects the download begin, it moves on. And that's really it. That's the primary difference when installing um, mods that are not hosted on Nexus. Now, this collection comes with two optional mods. So once all of the required mods have been installed, it will give you the option to install those mods, or you can completely ignore them. I'm going to go to Show Optional Mods to see what we've got. We've got Enhanced Item Info, which is great if you are the sort of person who likes more information when looking at items, and the Weapon Mod Menu. Now, the Weapon Mod menu is technically not required if you're using Stewie's Tweaks and you make the required any changes, and I will probably be doing that. Um, that was installed in the previous collection. However, if you've not installed that previous collection, you don't have that mod, or you just prefer the Weapon Mod menu, you could install this optional mod as well. I'm going to stick with Enhanced Item Info, I'm going to install that. It's going to deploy it. And then I'm pretty much done. I've actually installed two collections now. Once in game, there is a distinct lack of heads up display because I've also installed one HUD as part of this. As you can see, you've got the, um, the heads up display, crosshair, and ammo count. And if I go to my Pip Boy, you can see the changes that Darnified UI has made. Uh, if I go back to the menu, I've also got the Mod Configuration menu, which is yet another one of those mods that I consider absolutely essential. Now, I've gone through this process fairly methodically, and hopefully you now understand everything you need to understand to install collections using Vortex. But now I want to show you how quickly you can install these collections once you get the hang of it. And to do that, I'm going to install the same two collections on a completely freshly reset Fallout New Vegas. I'm going to open up Vortex. There are no mods installed. 
it will immediately detect that I do not have the script extender. Obviously, it's also detected that I can't run that. I'm going to click more and download the script extender. There's an update for Vortex while I'm making the video. Of course there is. We'll do that later on. And now that the script extender has installed, I will simply start with the stable New Vegas collection. Add to Vortex. I will install it on my test collection, on my test profile. I'm going to read the instructions once again, even though I do know them. Um, I didn't really read them very carefully, did I? <laughs> well, I wrote them so I know what they say, okay? Um, so that is done. I now need to go along to the patcher. Double click. The file has been patched. I'm now going to go along to the Darnified UI collection. Hit Add to Vortex. Go back to Vortex. Install this. I'm going to continue on to Tale of Two Wastelands. Download the file. It's this one. I will then get pop-up for MCM. I will install that. I'm going to install the optional MCM file. It's this one. There. And I believe the rest is plain sailing. It should just install the remainder of the mods. There you are. I'm going to have one of the optional mods. It was the enhanced item info one. And that's it. I've pretty much finished the installation process for two collections. And there we are, in-game. Good performance, no stutter, Darnified UI, one hood, and the mod configuration menu. So there you have it. That's how easy it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all we have time for in this video. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of how to install collections using Vortex and we'll go out and try lots of different collections and see what craziness ensues. I will be making some more tutorial videos on this subject and I would love it if you could join me for those or for any of the other videos I make. However, Whichever video you decide to join me on again, I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember as always, have fun.